Hello everybody, it is a pleasure to be with you all on this uh, series of devotionals that we're doing on Ephesians 1. The text that we're looking at this week is from verses 15 through 23. Now, we, we have been talking from verse 1 until this point about uh, Christian identity. Who are the people of God? Who are you? Who, who, who am I? Paul is, is, uh, uses most of the first chapter to point us toward our position before God. He starts by saying that before the foundation of the world, before God spoke the universe into existence, in eternity past, he thought of you and me, uh, and he chose us according to his purpose and according to that purpose he predestined us to be adopted as his children and according to that desire of his he spun the entire scope of 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 history to bring us to himself at the proper time now paul is wrapping up this idea here saying that since i heard about you and your faith in the lord jesus christ i i, I really pray that you will understand the greatness of this calling that you've been called with. That you may actually take a moment to think about how huge this deal is. It's not that you came to Christ because at a certain time it suited you to do so. It's not that because of some circumstance you just decided to adopt a new religion and then this was so. And if that was your, your if, that, if that's your situation, then you may have not known Christ yet. But what he's saying is, if you are in Christ, this is a huge deal. God thought of you before the foundation of the world. He spun the entire universe to bring you whom he had thought of before you even existed, before he even said, let there be light. He spun the entire course of history to bring you to himself. I want you to understand, Paul says, how great this hope that we've been called to is. It's not, it's not just a religion type of thing. This is not a confession. This is not just one faith that you, you received from your parents or that you heard somewhere. This was God working throughout history, all things according to his purpose to bring you to him. Now, that's the identity of us who believe. But then he continues speaking of the power and the strength and the greatness of the one who called. No longer is this pointed, us, uh, pointed at us who believed, but now he uh, shifts the attention to the one who calls and says, God exercised this power in Christ by raising him from the dead and seating him at the right hand in the heavens. Far above every ruler and authority, power and dominions and every title given, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he subjected everything under his feet and appointed him as head over everything, uh, over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. Now, many times we get caught up in the present time, in our predicament, in what's going on around us right now. We see the hunger, we see the rumors of war, we see the, the political systems collapsing all over the world. We see the economic systems on, uh, at the bridge of, of, of downfall, of, of bankruptcy. We see this, this constant tensions between China and Russia and, and, and the Western world and Taiwan and whatever is happening with, with ISIS. And, and then we look at the pandemic and we see everything around and then we try to look at ourselves in that context and we say, now what about me? What am I going to do? Well, Paul says, I, I really hope that you will lift up your eyes a little and look at the one who called Look at the greatness of that Christ that God decided to work all this through. And that you may look at the wondrous plan that God mapped out for all of us 
before the foundation of the world. Because if we are his body, if we are his church, we were vested, we were imparted with the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way.